Club Corner now. The clash yesterday between the dogs and the cats with the dogs, the victors. Mickey Malthouse and Tom Hafey talking about the clash with Peter McKenna. Well, Mick, uh, pretty tough game. And as a spectator, it was a magnificent standard of football. I don't know whether you would appreciate that, but you'd be happy to, sure, to get the four points. I think any side that goes down Geelong and gets four points, whether by one point or 100 points, so I'm just satisfied to come away with the, uh, the win. The start of that third quarter, Tom, you really did dominate that game for eight or nine minutes, and yet you just didn't put the goals on the board. Why is it? Why does Ablett miss so many? Is he firing from too far out or what? Well, that's probably half the problem, but I did think he missed a couple of relatively easy shots. He's usually a... Well, he can kick straight, but he does kick a lot of points, there's no doubt about that. But I think, as you said, that third quarter, we just handled the ball so much for so little handballing when we didn't have to and bad kick under pressure of course in a lot of cases but we just had so much use of the ball we should have been a goal or two in front of three quarter time. You must have been delighted the way that Neil Cordy, even though he had a couple of goals kicked on him, Mick, you know you threw the challenge to him onto Ablett, he did pretty well for a while there didn't he? Yeah, Neil played on him in the first round and I thought he did quite well and uh, I, I thought uh, Peter Foster lowered his colours to, um, to Ablett and Neil was given the responsibility and uh, accepted it and did, did very well. But not only did he curtail him, but he also put us into attack a few times. So uh, he, it was a positive move by, uh, by Neil. He did very well. Tommy, you rucked the vision without Mossop. Uh, Flanagan down yesterday. You must have been pleased with the efforts of Burke. Well, Damien's first game for the year, and I thought that he took the challenge right up to Andrew Purser, and I think we did a lot better from the centre bounce when Damien did go in there. Mickey, centre forward. Now, you, I think Jimmy Edmonds started off there and you tried Sewell. Uh, what's your answer there? Groner Wigan, who are you going to play there? Well, I think that's dictated too on the, on the actual day, the weather conditions and also the, the team we're playing against. Jimmy Sewell's played very well for us there. Uh, Robert Groner Wigan's played uh, pretty good games there early in the season and Jimmy Edmonds got the capacity to play there. So, um, whilst we're probably... Um, we haven't got a dominant centre half forward, we've certainly got one that can test pretty fiercely, so it's either one of those three players can play there. Tommy, I thought you fell down badly in the goal square. You're missing Mark Jackson and uh, young older dice. Well, I've been giving him big raps yeah, yesterday sure. down a little bit. Yeah, and I think they've been warranted, Peter. I think that he's going to be a player of the future, but he just didn't hold his marks yesterday. I think he clearly got his hand the ball on many occasions, but unfortunately didn't hold them. Uh, Mark Jackson would probably do well in conditions as they were yesterday. I think that we probably would miss Mark a little bit, but I think Craig will see a lot more of him. Mickey, I was doing the votes after the game and there's some outstanding players, I think you'd agree. Stephen Wallace. Now, he got a lot of kicks himself, but by heck, his opponent got plenty. Yes, both Cinnamon um, probably cut each other out as far as the possessions went. Geelong certainly got value for, from Williams and I think we got value from, from Steve Wallace. Steve's always got the, uh, the capacity to get a lot of kicks and um, we knew that uh, Greg Williams has certainly set Geelong up in the last few weeks and has had a uh, very good season so we're conscious of that. But um, I suppose when you analyse it, they had a great influence on the game other than the fact that they got a lot of kicks each. Well, congratulations to go six points uh, clear, Mick. I think you'll be pleased with that. And Tommy, you're still in it. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Thanks so. Peter and Tommy, the Bataki, that's the best sports, uh, sports fest. That's more good you can get. They're really top class. And, of course, not forgetting your sport, a great magazine, the Ballantyne's Tasty Cheese. And for the girls, we've got the McMahon's Honey. And what's your name, darling? Danny Allen. How many you got any boys, uh, Mick? Two boys. Two boys. Two, and sitting home. two boys and two girls. Yeah. They're pretty. I love your earrings, darling. Turn around to the cameras and let the people see your earrings at home. How about that? They real that they real emeralds? Ooh, you must have some money, Mick. Right, thank you, gentlemen. The Canberra Club Award. Ablett, Buse and Williams getting the votes for Geelong. Wallace, Hawkins and Royal for Footscray. Whilst in the progressive for the two sides, we find Williams just leading from Ablett and Bruns at Geelong, while Steve Wallace, a four-point 